I want to preach a message today entitled Kingdom People because kingdom people need to have a kingdom mentality. In Romans chapter 14, the apostle Paul is writing to some kingdom people about a kingdom mentality. Here's what he says. As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bend to me. Every tongue will declare allegiance to God. Now he had written to the church in Philippi that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And here he's making sure that the church in Rome understands that every knee will bend and every tongue declare allegiance to God because Jesus and God are one. That's who they are. Verse 12, yes, each of us. Oh, hang on. I like that first part. I'm just making sure everybody's looking. I saw some people looking around. We're supposed to be looking at the word. No, just, each of us. Everybody say us. us. Yeah, that's almost everybody. We'll keep reading. Never to catch up. Yes, each of us will give a personal account to God. It will not be a finger pointing account to God. It will be a personal account. Verse 13. So let's stop condemning. Thank you for those hearty amens. I'm going to preach this thing whether y'all help me or not. I want you to notice that the Word of God does not, stay, does not say stop correcting. In fact, Paul writes to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he says that every word in this book is breathed by the mouth of God. And it is good for teaching, for rebuke, ooh, I don't like that, for correcting, and for training because hear me a rebuke without correction is condemnation and correction without training is condemnation but the word of god says we need to stop condemning and decide we'll make some t-shirts between now and wednesday i have decided some of y'all decided and forget i better get back in this decide instead instead to live like a pagan when you don't get your, no, to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to get drunk too. <laughs> to stumble or fall. Jump down to verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or meat or drink but righteousness, and we need a revival of righteousness. It's a revival of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And I like the King James right there because it says, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Verse 18 says, if you serve Jesus, and that's a, that's a big old if, if, Y'all ready to sit down. I'm going to let you. If you serve Jesus with this attitude, then you will by default. You don't have to perform. Just by default, you will please God. And watch this. And others will approve you because they won't be able to say anything against you. Amen. Verse 19, and I'm praying. So then, let us aim for harmony in the church for unity in the body of Christ because a house divided against itself can not stand. So let us aim for harmony in the church as we build each other. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. Father, I pray right now. You pray for me, I'll pray for you. God, I pray right now for the unity of the Spirit to rest on this place. God, I pray for every person, every family, every individual in the room, everybody watching online. I pray, oh God, that we would see as you see. God, that we would have the mind of Christ this morning. And I pray that you would give us spiritual ears to hear what the, the Holy Spirit wants to say. And God, I pray that you would give us a heart. Come on, ask the Lord. Soften my heart and soften the hearts of everybody around me. Come on, pray for the people around you right now. God, soften the hearts in this place today and give us a mind to understand and comprehend how 
how this message applies to us. I rebuke a spirit of demonic division off of it. I rebuke the spirit of offense off of this place. I cancel the scheme of the enemy in the name of Jesus. And we pray together as the body of Christ because how good and pleasing it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. Right now we pray that the spirit of unity would rest upon this people. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, give him praise one more time. You can be seated. If you stand up again now, you did it on your own. Today, I want to talk to you about living as kingdom people. Kingdom people need to have a kingdom mentality. I want you to say it with me just to make sure I regained your attention. Everybody say kingdom. Kingdom Kingdom people need to have a kingdom perspective. You will not behave according to kingdom principles if you do not believe in the king. Thank you for those hearty amens. If we claim to be kingdom people, then we must have the king's perspective. I cannot just agree with the king. If I am a child of the king, I can't just agree with the king. I have to have the heart of the king. I have to have the mind of the king. I think like the king. I act like the king. I react like the king. I want to open today with just complete transparency. I'm going to give you a shotgun blast of kingdom issues in about three and a half to five, seven minutes. And, uh, and you're going to feel, you're, I'm, tell, I'm letting you know right now, for the next few minutes, you're going to feel like you're standing in front of a hydrant, fire hydrant with a cup. So here's my, here's my encouragement. Just catch what you can. Okay, because right behind you is a swimming pool that's just receiving everything shooting out of that fire hydrant. It's called this message being recorded online. If you miss it, you can go back and listen to it. So don't get overwhelmed and don't try to keep up with everything. But I just want you to hear with the ears of your heart. Um, I am not, and I repeat, I am not anti-politics. Thank you. I am not anti-government. In fact, I really make a personal effort to love everybody right where they are. I was praying one time about liking somebody because I was just struggling. I was like, Lord, I don't, I just don't like them. And the Lord said, I didn't tell you to like them. Come on, this set me free. He said, I told you to love them. And then I heard the Lord say, I don't really like them either. (laughs) But you've got to learn To love them. So I really, I I have to crucify my flesh every single day. Come on, because the Bible says that Jesus people, I'm talking about kingdom people in our house, we explain to our children, listen, we don't act like that. We don't go there. We can't do that. We can't respond that way. I want to. Want, not want, not like will not, not, but want. I know it sounds like the same word to you. (laughs) I want to. But we can't do that because we're Jesus people. And Jesus people decide to do things differently. Okay, so I really make a personal effort to love everybody. And God help me, I try to honor those in authority. Yeah, before I was a boss, I had a boss. Before I got to coach, I had a coach. And we are not in a culture that teaches children to honor authority No matter what. We only honor authority if we like the authority. We only honor authority if we agree with with the authority. And we have a verse-by-verse study in the book of Romans available for you on our YouTube channel, New Hope Church Eunice, or New Hope, yeah, New Hope Eunice, and or EuniceChurch.com. Verse-by-verse from Romans chapter 1, verse 1 
down to Romans chapter 14, verse 4. And we're still working on it. We've recorded the rest. I jumped ahead because I want to show you the context of what Paul is arriving at. Hear me, church. This is really important for kingdom people. The only time that it is justified for a child of God not to honor an authority is if the authority is attempting to make you do something dishonorable. That's it. The only time that you are justified in not obeying or not honoring authority is when the authority, they can change the definition of marriage all they want to. I still have to honor the authority. They will be held responsible. Y'all not gonna like this. They, and I've been told that some, for some people, I just, I know this is how it's gonna be. For some people, I talk too much about politics. For some people, I don't talk enough about politics. So I just decided about seven years ago, I'm not gonna get in this pulpit and please people. I'm just going to preach as a vessel and an audience of one. And so I, I know that it doesn't matter. They'll be held responsible for what they do with the tax dollars. Come on. But you're responsible. No, y'all not going to like this. Jesus said, even though we're in the Roman Empire, come on, even though these people are twisted and misunderstood, they're ungodly unbelievers, you still grin, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. But the problem is we have a problem. I done got in something. We have a problem rendering unto Caesar because really we are not willing to render unto God what is God's. I'm not anti. I'm not trying to make anybody mad today. I'm just saying unless an authority tries to press me to do something dishonorable and or I'm going to jump in on this ship too and or impress something dishonorable upon my children. That is when we <laughs> will say, hey, I want to do my best to honor you, but honoring you and obeying you are not in the same category. As for me and my house, now if you get in the way of my Jesus for my children, then I'm going to have to remove you because I just turned from a friend to a shepherd. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. And you're no longer a sheep in a field. You're a wolf in my pasture. So something, something's got to go. Something's got to change. This is my last chance to implore you two days before one of the most, probably the most, until four years from now, contentious elections that we've ever seen. The most dirt dragging, garbage talking election. All we know is what the other person didn't do. We don't have any idea what somebody's actually gonna do. So I implore you to fast tomorrow. If you really care, then you will fast and pray. You won't just point and complain. You'll fast and pray. And then you'll take somebody with you, and on Tuesday, you will go and vote because your vote is your voice, and Jesus isn't coming back for a bride too lazy to get up and vote. I can promise you, everybody that gets paid through New Hope Fellowship Incorporated and Eunice Christian Academy will leave at some point if they have not already. They will go vote on Tuesday or I will dock their pay. Why? Because it is really important. I will take that hour that you should have gone and I will give it back to God. Come on, somebody. Because it is really important that God's people make sure the voice of God is heard as long as we still have an opportunity. And I encourage you, I didn't even say this in first service, that we prioritize the main thing. What's the main thing? Family, sanctity of marriage, the life of the unborn, and biblical biology. Get in the booth and vote to the best of your ability. Look, I'm not here to be rude. I don't, I don't want to be arrogant because King David was forgiven for adultery, but Saul lost the kingdom over arrogance. So I don't want to be arrogant. I don't want to appear condescending to people that I'm supposed to be reaching. And yet, in the same breath, I am not against getting involved when godlessness is attempting to press an agenda on the innocent. We have states and leaders that consider it okay 
to murder a baby inside of the womb. And I love, I just, just, just thank you, Holy Spirit. I love what Dr. Ben Carson said. If it's not a baby in the womb, then why are we harvesting organs? We have leaders who want to murder a baby in the womb and some who are willing to take the life of that child even after that baby is delivered. We have states and leaders right now there are legislations being passed or voted upon this Tuesday that would allow a child who is mentally uh, confused to have procedures without parental consent. It would allow the state to suppress a biological hormonal develop, development and mutilate a child without a parent saying, I want that to happen to my child. But hear me, you may make a child, how many of you understand kids? don't know what they want. A child doesn't know what they want. You may make a child happy for a moment and they'll lose their soul for eternity because you wanted to try to please them or make them happy instead of understanding that it is our calling to make them holy. Come on, somebody. If somebody, if somebody wants to live an unbiblical lifestyle outside of holy matrimony, and let me just throw everybody in this bucket. I'm talking about men living with women and sleeping with women who are not in the, in the sanctity of marriage. Listen to me. You can't sin and be content in your sin and then get mad at the way somebody else sins. A man living outside of holy matrimony with a woman is just as oh my God, is just as unholy as a man sleeping with a man or a woman sleeping with a woman. And if you want to do that, then I know so I see people whispering and turning and talking. He done got something today. All I did it was an extra hour of sleep. Come on, somebody. But I wrote this before I got the hour. I just came ready to say what needs to be said. You may dwell in that for a moment, and that is your prerogative for now. But if you start trying to teach that ungodly, unbiblical, and often perverse behavior to my child, now I got to take the word of God and turn it into the sword of the spirit. I'm not here to force anybody to do anything that they don't want to do. But if you want me to keep my faith out of politics, you better keep your politics out of my faith. Because I will speak on behalf of of the kingdom of God. I will vote on behalf of the kingdom of God. I will stand and I will speak the truth and I know that I gotta do it in a way that comes as loving when I'm doing it in person and I need you to understand today that I don't preach the way that I talk to people. I love our, I don't just walk up to somebody and say, you dirty rotten. I just, that's, that's, that's not how this thing goes. Listen, I love our state. Here's the, here's the water hydrant, if you will. I love our state. I love our nation. I love football. Come on, I love athletics. I love LSU. I hate Arkansas. I don't hate the people. Just that ugly helmet with that fat pig on the side of it. I love, any Arkansas fans, we love you. Just hate your team. I just want you to just clarify. I love to duck hunt and I love to shoot whitetail bucks. I'm for all that stuff. And, and let me just, again, fire hydrant. I really, I like multiple genres of music. I really do. Uh, I like all kinds of music that did not put Jesus on the cross. But if it put Jesus on the cross, I'm not listening to that song. I will listen to 98 worship songs. It's just how I roll. I will listen to 98 praise slash worship, so worship songs and then like one or two songs with no Christian influence. But hear me, kingdom people. It is really important that we designate the difference between a song that has no Christian influence and a song that has unchristian influence. <laughs> Because those, those two things are not the same. And you can't just let deem, you can't just let demonic principalities sing to your children and start wondering why they're acting like a devil. You put it in their head and it got in their heart and now it's happening in their lives. I could care less about T-Swift. I just made somebody mad. Y'all gonna be all right. We'll pray for you. I don't care about Jelly Roll and I don't care about 50 Cent turning into a full-size dollar. That's funny right there. <laughs> that brother done ate himself. <laughs> Hanging upside down in the halftime show. I'm like, they put a double trust under that thing. It baffles me. 
Come on, church, it baffles me how many people will shout about politics. It baffles me how many people will raise their voice and, and post for their favorite politicians. It baffles me how many people will jump up and scream at an athletic event. When a child scores a touchdown or lands a flip or hits a ball or, 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 or makes a putt, and yet they'll lift their hands and shed a tear at a concert, but they think it's weird to do it in a church service. Uh-uh. I'm calling a flag on that right there. We came out of halftime. We're back in the fourth, third quarter right now, and I'm calling a penalty on the church. Listen to me. If you can shout for your son, then we can shout for God's son. If you can clap for your favorite football team, then we can clap our hands, all you people, and shout unto the king of kings. If you can raise your hands and jump up and down at a concert that don't, won't last past that night, then why is it weird to lift up holy hands in the house of God? If if you can lift your voice over temporary solutions, then let the redeemed of the Lord lift their voice and shout unto God whose name is everlasting to everlasting because my Bible says, and it ain't just him, we're not just gonna shout on Sunday and live other ways every other day. I'm talking about there is coming a time when the Bible says, as surely as the Lord lives, you will bow your knee. You will uncross your arms. You will take your hands hands out of your pocket. You will move your teeth inside of your mouth and your tongue will vibrate and every single person will declare allegiance to God so you may as well practice now. It's not weird. It's biblical. It's not just for the charismatic and emotional. It's for the child of God. If the king is in the room then the king's children celebrate that the king is there. Yeah, here's the truth, in case you were wondering about how I sugarcoat that last part. You know, people used to say, oh, that, that sugar-coated church over there, they just ear tickling. I'm like, they ain't never come here. <laughs> people ain't, these people ain't got YouTube. So look, hear me, hear me as a, as a husband. Let me just come down as, as, a, as a daddy, a parent in, in a, a twisted and perverse generation. My children have a 0.02% chance of playing professional sports. That's not where y'all thought I was going with that, is it? And by the way, just to lighten the mood, I want to let you know that I am part of the 0.02%. I just wanted to make sure that you know that the Houston Astros bought my wife's engagement ring. Thank you, Jesus. I'm in the 99.98 percentile. Thank you, Lord. However, there's a 0.02% chance that the children of the parents in this church will ever get paid to play for professional sports. And yet we prioritize that over gathering together in the name of Jesus. We will spend thousands of dollars on athletics and academics and get offended over a few dollars on Sunday. And by the way, there's even less of a chance that your child is the next American Idol. And if we would stop teaching our children to perform for their glory and help them to understand that God has gifted them for his glory, then we would tear down every idol and the Lord would be seated back upon the praises of his people. Yeah. Um, there is a 100% chance that every person in this room and every family member connected to them, 100% chance that we will stand before God and give an account of our lives. Every one of my children will stand before God and I will watch them knowing what I prioritized in their lives. Can you imagine standing before the king knowing that you did not properly prioritize a kingdom mentality and the king's ways and your child stands before God half-hearted because your house was divided? Come on, church. 
I'm talking about kingdom today. Come on, I'm trying to shake the people for the unshakable things of the kingdom because we are kingdom people. We're kingdom people. That's what we are. That's who we are. And kingdom people have the king's mentality. The word kingdom can be found in the word of God over 300 times. 42 of the 66 books of the Bible mention the word kingdom. 162 times in the New Testament alone, and 126 of those mentions are in the four books we refer to as the Gospels. 19 of Jesus's over 40 parables have something to do with the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter four that Jesus came out of the wilderness. Why did he go into the wilderness? He went into the wilderness to show the devil what he was about to get done. He went into the wilderness and he fasted and he prayed and he was tempted the whole time he was fasting and praying. Don't expect the enemy to sit around when you take, battle, when you take to the battlefield in prayer and fasting. The enemy came and he tried to tempt Jesus for 40 days and at the end of the 40 days, the enemy began to bring up scripture and test Jesus' knowledge and study of what really matters. And he would quote one verse and Jesus would quote another verse. Listen to me, parents, elder and young alike. It is really important that we learn more than one memory verse. It's really important that we get enough of the word of God inside of us that we're able to discern when a wolf is trying to twist this book into some selfish endeavor. If the enemy tells you one scripture, you ought to have enough word in your heart that you begin to tell him seven more scripture and have the ability not to just tell the devil what you believe, not to just tell your friends and your coworkers what you believe, but why you believe it according to the word of God. Not just because my mama taught me. Not just because I was raised in it. I feel something right here. I'm going to preach for about 10 more seconds. Not just because somebody before me told me it was true. But because I've put my faith in the word. And I've watched him be faithful thus far. I don't just sing about it on Sunday. I live in it every single day. The word is a lamp unto my feet. The word is a light unto my path. I don't live on bread of alone but every word that comes from the mouth of God not some of the words not the ones I like but the ones he wrote we're kingdom people the Bible says who I'm back I'm back verse 17 from that time from what time from the time that Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness and then he came back out of the wilderness the Bible said filled with the Holy Spirit now, I don't want to overpreach this part right here. I'm just going to say this and move on. If Jesus needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I ain't got time to debate that doctrine today. I'm just telling you, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for Chris. From that point on, he came out of the wilderness and he was preaching just this very simple message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent in this passage. It doesn't mean to turn away from sin. It means to change your mind. Because you're not going to turn away from sin until you realize what it's doing to your head. Come on, you're not going to turn away from sin until you come to the realization of what it's doing in your heart and how it's affecting the people that love you and the will that God has for you. But when you realize, come on, that's why Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and he said, the carnal mind, the mind of a man or a woman, an earthly mind cannot understand the things of God, but by the Spirit, these things, what things? Kingdom mentality has been revealed unto them. So Jesus is saying, repent. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. King James and New King James, and actually the original Greek, it doesn't just mean at hand. It means drawing near. So here's what Jesus is saying. Uh, I need you to change the way that you were thinking because the king is coming. I need you to change the way that you're thinking because this room is not the same anymore. The king is drawing near. And when the king shows up, the kingdom shows up. So we're not going to act like we used to act. We're not going to 
think like we used to think. We're not gonna behave like we used to behave. We're not gonna react like we used to react. Why? Because the king is at hand and we are kingdom people with a kingdom mentality. So we don't just not do the things that we're not supposed to do. Y'all may go silent right here. We will actually do the things that we are supposed to do. The church has gotten so good at no that they sit around, listen to other people preach and feel better about what they don't do anymore. And we call that selfish salvation. If all you do is look down near your nose at people who are doing the things that you used to do, but God gave you a revelation not to do that anymore, and you never move, I feel like preaching, and you never move into the things that God has for you, I'm telling you, the kingdom of God, come on, the promises of God are not just no and don't. The promises of God are yes and let it be. The promises of God are not just not about what you're not supposed to do. The promises of God are about what we are called to do. It's not just about the no we give to our flesh. It's about the yes we give to Jesus. That's kingdom. So kingdom people don't pitch fits when their preferred politician doesn't win. Mm. Where'd my organ go? Don't come yet. We'll be here till two or one. Listen, there are gonna be two things that happen on Wednesday. Two things. Non-kingdom people, non-kingdom people will respond to the results. Whatever the results are, there will be an uprising across this nation. Whatever the results are, non-kingdom, earthly-minded people will respond to the results of one election. Non-kingdom people will also respond to the response. Which category will you fit in? Non-kingdom people will respond to the results that they do not want, and non-kingdom people will respond to the response that they did not want. Whatever happens, whoever wins, non-kingdom people will not respond in a kingdom way. But our kingdom, help me preach, is not of this world. So we don't get offended when somebody's mean to us because Jesus said, blessed is he who is not offended. In the last days, many will be offended, but blessed is he. In the last days, many will be offended. So if you feel offense rising up in you, you can know that ain't from Jesus. Because in the last days, many will be offended. And Jesus said, Blessed is he who is not offended. Jesus, help me practice what I preach right now, Lord. And we don't curl up in a corner and cry when things don't go our way. Why? Because we just got out of a series where David came back to Ziklag and everything that he had put his faith in had been stolen and burned to the ground. But we serve a God who is more than able to restore and recover it all. The author of Hebrews said it this way. I'm gonna come right back to it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Therefore, therefore what? Therefore, since we are receiving, we don't just read about people that, oh, sorry, Jesus. We don't, <laughs> somebody put Jesus on the platform with me this Sunday. I okay, pray he helps him preach. We don't, we, we don't just read about people that received the kingdom. We don't just talk about revivals that used to be. My Bible says we are receiving a kingdom and that kingdom cannot be shaken and my mind went to the throne room that Isaiah was in when he says the pillars shook yeah 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 that means that God can shake the pillars of our lives and God can shake the altars of our idolatry but our altars and our pillars cannot shake our God because we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken so let us be thankful we're going to have Thanksgiving with no tree. 
I had to. I had to. Actually, I'm a lie. My wife will make me put it up right before we drive to North Louisiana so we can come in and plug it in. I'm going to haul it down. They're going to put it up. I'm going hunting. Come on, somebody. So they're thankful. But I ain't putting it up right now, you crazy suckers. That's three weeks away from now. He, we were thankful, thankful. We're thankful. So what do we do? Out of gratitude, if we're kingdom people and we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, are you with me? Say, uh-huh. uh-huh. Yeah, so we worship God. We don't watch other people worship God. And we don't just sing a song on Sunday. Because Paul told the church in Rome earlier in this book, Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, I implore you, in view of God's mercy, because you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, offer your body holy and pleasing unto the Lord, for this is worship. So we worship God. We worship God with reverence and awe. Come on, we worship God on Sunday. We worship God on Wednesday. We worship God on Thursday. We worship God on Saturday night. I can't get no help today. When the world begins to worry, we worship God. When our loved ones pass into eternity, Lord, help me today. We worship God. When the economy crashes, we worship God. When the enemy steals something that we put our faith in, we worship God because we know that there is no devil that is able to destroy what God has already destined. The enemy cannot steal more from me than my God can recover for me. If Wall Street goes bankrupt, we worship worship God. Why? Because kingdom people will worship God with a kingdom mentality and we will respond in a kingdom way. On Wednesday, we will respond in a kingdom way. For the rest of this year, help me, we will respond in a kingdom way because our hope is not in a man or woman who sits in an oval office. (laughs) Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm about to close this message before I get to it. Pastor uh, Jim Rayleigh, he actually refers to himself. Come help me, come on. Come on, they'll think I'm almost done. (laughs) Pastor Jim Rayleigh, he refers to, it's actually, he, he refers to himself as Apostle Jim Rayleigh because he actually oversees uh, a lot of leaders and a lot of churches. And I don't just, I, anyways, he's a great friend of mine who was here for our men's conference, evangelist Alan Griffin. Um, that's his pastor. Jim Rayleigh is his pastor. Jim Rayleigh was raised in the Bahamas. His daddy was a missionary. And thank God for our missionaries. Come on. Thank God for missionaries like Jessica Wolf who will go to places that I don't want to go and do things that I don't want to do. Can I give you a 30 second? This is funny. It's personal. We were in the house last night and the electricity went off. I know. And it got hot quick, y'all. And I found out that my children um, have never really been without electricity that they remember. And their mama's really not great at it either. (laughs) Okay. So... She said, could y'all imagine living without electricity? And my kids were like, no, that's unbelievable. And I just had to pause for a second because I said, you guys do understand that electricity is only like a little over 100 years old, right? Well, like generations of and millenniums went by before Thomas Edison. You understand what I'm saying? Like before electricity, like, oh, I don't care. I don't care. We can't do it. We can't do it. And then Gabriel was sitting there and he said, man, our, what about our missionaries? She doesn't have, they don't have electricity down there either. You think they're okay? And I was like, I think she might've been without electricity before. She's a missionary. And Gabriel said, I don't know how she does that. I can't do without electricity. I said, that's why you ain't no missionary. (laughs) Pastor Jim Rayleigh, y'all go visit our missionary, Jessica, before you go today. It's a joy to support her and send her and pray for her and the ministry that she supports. Pastor Jim Rayleigh was in the Bahamas as a child. His daddy was a pastor there to the people of the Bahamas. And I'm not talking about like the Bahamas like you think. I'm not talking about like, come on, pretty mama, Key Largo, Montego kind of stuff. That's not what I'm... 
Everybody under 30 is so confused as to what I'm even talking about right now. Ba, 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 ba. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I'm talking about the impoverished Bahamas. I'm talking about the Bahamas of uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, who was raised as a black man in the Bahamas and was told by white people sent from the United Kingdom that black people were not equal with white people that kind of Bahamas. And the Bahamas is a province at that time of the United Kingdom. And Pastor Jim, who's uh, around his 60s at this point, was just a boy. And he remembers the preparations that took place when the Queen of the United Kingdom was coming to the Bahamas. The decorations, they, they found a, a Rolls Royce there in the Bahamas. It was a convertible and, and she was gonna ride down the streets and, and the people lined the streets of the Bahamas and because the queen was coming. And they made the preparations and they were looking with anticipation because the queen was coming. And this little boy, Jim Rayleigh, squeezed his way through the crowd and got to the front of the line and he was watching with anticipation because he saw the car coming down the road and the queen was coming in that white Rolls Royce. And I just wanna take the opportunity before election day, we're gonna fast, we're gonna pray, we're gonna vote, we're gonna do our best to represent Jesus as a church, but that's not gonna end on Wednesday whether we do or do not get our preferred person and our preferred policies. Why? Because we are kingdom people and the king is coming. I'm telling you that the king's people need to make their preparations ready. I'm telling you it's time to line the spiritual streets and get prepared because the king is coming. I know that you've heard it all of your life and every generation thought that Jesus was coming back but what I want you to know is that there is a generation that will not pass away until all these things come to pass and I believe with all of my heart that the king is mounting up on his white horse and he is preparing to come back to his people he didn't get nominated he isn't going to be elected he wasn't voted in and he can't be voted out he didn't become a king he was born a king and I came to prophesy and remind the children of God today that if the Roman Empire could not breach the birth of his kingdom, then American politics cannot stop the final wave of his kingdom. We have instructions from the king. Do not conform to the patterns and the cultures of this society, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and you will know what is the will of the king. We are instructed by the king to reach the lost to lay hands on the sick to anoint our hands with oil to cast out devils and to preach this gospel we are anointed to feed the poor and honor those in authority while we pray for those who persecute us we have been instructed by the king to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. So we are not swayed by social media. We are not manipulated by mainstream media. And we are not placed in bondage by big tech or big pharma. Russia and Iran can unite. China and North Korea can unite. But America better stay behind Israel because God hadn't changed his mind that I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. I came to tell you today that hell couldn't stand against the king and neither can temporary policies or elected politicians because the kingdom of God is not a matter of who we listen to or what we watch or our favorite team or our personal preference. The kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We're not seeking to build our kingdom. We are seeking the king. We are righteous because he made us righteous. We have peace because the 
chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. We have joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We are not seeking provision. We are seeking the provider. If you need a touch of God, you're not seeking the healing. You're seeking the healer. If you need joy in the morning, then you don't seek to be happy. You seek the presence of the one who grants you the fullness of joy. We don't just need, oh God help me finish this thing. We don't just need America to be built back better. We don't just need America to be made great again. We need the king to get into our society and do something that has never been done before because kingdom people still believe with all of their heart that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men. I don't want anything that's already been. I want the king to come in and do something new. Fresh fire. Fresh revelation. We don't just need a miracle. We need the miracle worker. We need the one who says, if you serve me with this attitude, if you will serve him, come on, I'm not here to feel good about a big gathering. I'm here recruiting an army to rise up for such a time as this and take back the land that God has promised them. So let us aim for harmony in the church and let us build each other up. Come on, you feel built up today? Yeah, hear this and I'm gonna send you out. We're not closing anything, I'm gonna send you. You're not going back home, you're going back out. We're not ending service, we're sending saints. There is no kingdom without the king. So I want to ask this question, and I encourage you to really evaluate. Because all of that led us to this. Is he a king? Or is he my king? Because he is the king. But my question is, is he your king? Is he king of your social media? Is he king of your private messenger? Because the king knows the passcode. I'm trying to help somebody. He doesn't close his eyes when we go off by ourselves. The king knows our recorded history, our unrecorded history, and our deleted history. Yeah, yeah. So if you're following somebody that's not following the king, then you need to unfollow them until they decide to follow him. Yeah, and I, I just want to make sure that you heard me, that if you are following in any way or any place someone who is not following Jesus, they are probably having more influence on you than you are willing to admit. So you need to stop following. Go unfo unfollow them until they begin to follow him. Hang on, hang on. Is he king? Because we're going to be talking about it over the next few weeks as we make our way towards thanks giving where'd she go cause cause she can't go if we don't give how can they hear unless somebody preaches and how can they preach unless they're sent so is he king mm -hmm. over our finances does he have dominion over our desires? Do you sacrifice your relationship with God 
to, buy, to be entertained by ungodly people? Do you sacrifice your confidence in Christ by allowing the enemy to make you react in a non-kingdom way? We've got 58 days until the end of this year. I counted before first service. I want to finish this thing even stronger than we start 2025. We need to finish strong. The only way that you will do that if it's the strength of the Lord is your defense. I pray this prayer and, and, and I'll share it with you and then I'm going to pray it over you and we're going to go. But before I go, as often as I remember, before I preach, before I speak to leaders, before whatever invite or opportunity the Lord allows me, every morning in my own house, I tell the Lord, I acknowledge to the Lord, God, I can't do this. Guys, I can't, I can't do this. Don't put your hope in me. Because I go to the king and I say, God, that's your bride. God, these are your children. Lord, this is your office. It's your staff. God, these are your people. I pray that you would remove me from the throne and take the seat. Take the throne. Take your place and help me to represent you. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today for New Hope Online. Our vision here at New Hope is to meet people and grow closer to God together. So we value your engagement to our online experience, and we look forward to meeting with you and connecting with you in person in the future. If you go to EuniceChurch.com, we have a connect card tab where you can fill out a connect card so that number one, we can simply connect with you. And number two, we can help resource you to become the person that God has called you to be. We're so excited that God is meeting you where you are. And we believe that God has more for you. We would love to see you in the future. Thanks for tuning in.